Amanda, who won her game. Yay! Yay. And she's going to talk about it. Okay. There you go. You are black against yes. Mr. Derson. So, I, I know I kind of already said this when he plays C3 here. Uh, I like felt a lot of relief because normally I'm a crazy player. I love Sicilians. Normally I'll do whatever. But after a couple weeks ago, I didn't feel like I was quite tactically as sharp as normal, just kind of being out of practice. So I kind of was like, all right, in for a quiet game, I can handle this a little bit better maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so I just played kind of standard C3 Sicilian stuff, played 9F6, um, mm -hmm. E5, Knight D5. Four, take, take, knight c6 stuff, and then knight c3, and I capture, capture back, and then d6, and captures, and d6, bishop takes. And all I could remember at this stage of the game, I'm not really booked up on c3 Sicilian stuff, and it's not fresh in my head at all, but um, I just was like, play simple chess here. It's a hanging pawn structure. Um, eventually get castled, put rips on c8 and d8, and play against the target on c3, and if he ever pushes c4, play against the target on d4, and just play like normal, simple chess. So that was kind of what was going through my head at this point. Don't overcomplicate it, especially um, against an opponent who's a little bit um, weaker than I am rating wise so I was trying to just kind of play simple. So bishop d3, and then queen c7, bishop e3, bishop d7, Queen C2, Rook C8, castles, and then here, um, when he before he castled, um, I was always looking at Knight B4 as an option, just trying to figure out uh, when exactly would be the right time to play it. Obviously, I think White's strongest piece is probably the Bishop on D3. My worst piece is probably my dark squared Bishop. So I thought if I could get those pieces traded off. Um, the, the target on c3 is even better because then without the d3 bishop his king side attack never really goes anywhere so um the minute he castled i was like oh he's Wait, giving me knight b4 which i was yeah. like well that seems like a gift but i had to double check everything make sure i wasn't hallucinating um so after captures he, oh sorry he played queen b1 i was ready for him to capture and then play against the weak d4 structure and everything um but after queen b1 it seemed a little strange to me i didn't know if he'd rather just have that weak structure and try to hold on and kind of maybe play a slightly worse position with white or just give up the c3 pawn seems a little strange to me um so i just took it i was like it's a free pawn i should probably just take it right um so after rick takes um and then i just captured back and after rick takes c1 um here i was kind of torn i was like i just got to kind of come up with a game plan a6 just made the most sense to me to take away any d5 stuff in the future where he could possibly get rid of that weak pawn on d4, open up his e3 bishop, which is kind of weak right now, and just avoid any kind of a7 pawn ever being captured type of moves. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and then after knight e5, um, I just played b5 here. And in retrospect, maybe b5 is not the strongest move because it gives up that c5 square a little too easily and then my life got a little bit more complicated yeah. than it should have. So in retrospect, maybe b5 is no good. I was trying to prevent this weird knight c4 stuff and then the knight coming to b6 and a5 and just, I wasn't sure if how, how strong my pawn side was at the moment and I didn't want my bishops to get weak trying to protect the pawns on b7 and having to retreat. So maybe it was too aggressive too soon and I can just get away with maybe just playing king e7 and letting him play knight c4. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you played all the moves that I was suggesting. B5, King H, yeah. so I, I don't know if it's good or not. Yeah, it's okay, <laughs> right? I don't know either if uh, it's quite the most accurate way to play that structure. But it made sense to me. I was like, you've got a dark squared bishop. Keep your pawns on light squares. Like, just keep it simple. Um, so King E7, keep the king in the center. Um, knight C5. And then I played Rook C here. Um, again. Just figuring if he takes on a6, play rook a8, snatch the a2 pawn, and life should be okay. And kind of yep. preventing any of his relocations to e4 at the moment, um, at least. But again, I, I still feel weird in this position because it feels like it should be so much better for black because you're just up a simple pawn. But I, And his bishop on e3 is just not, not very good. But it was still a little complicated to sort of untangle it and turn it into like a decisive advantage. So I played a... Uh, 
or he played bishop d2, I played rook c6, since now he's starting to play knight takes a6, knight b4 kind of stuff, and I didn't mm -hmm. want to let any of that happen. Um, he played rook e1, and here I, I knew that I have to be careful of all this d5 stuff where eventually his bishop ends up on b4 or something. So I, my plan was to try to figure out how to relocate these two pieces, and I wasn't really sure how to do it very uh, very accurately. So I kind of here started maneuvering, and I don't know if it was quite like computer recommended. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so. Like this is what I was thinking. Like <coughs> I feel like someone like Hayden could untangle this position a lot easier than I could, and maybe there's something obvious here, and I just missed it. But I'm not sure oh, if there really? was. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you played very yeah. carefully, which was which was perfect. <laughs> yeah, it just it made yeah. sense. No rush, no, no need yeah, to Yeah, I was kind of like, I'll, I'll wait. Um, I need to get my king off e7, but I don't really know exactly where I want to go yet, whether I want to go like d8, c8, and come up this way and try to get to, to b6 or somewhere like that eventually um, and get out of, or get off the e file. I wasn't really sure. So I just played bishop c8, keep everything kind of locked up. Um, after, I thought a3 was one of the stranger moves of the game by him, just mm -hmm. because, I don't know, like, Simple chess, right? If he puts his pawn on a3, it can be attacked by the bishop, so much he's easier. Right. That's that's kind of the thought process I had too. That if he wants to strengthen his <coughs> position in any way, a3 doesn't really help him do it. I thought maybe he like mouse flipped and was trying to play a4 mm -hmm. for a minute, but I wasn't sure if that was good either. So I kind of just was like, all right, I think maybe he's kind of in the same boat as me. He doesn't really know how to improve his position yet. So he's sort of playing moves, but I feel like that's a move that actually weakens his position long term. So maybe not the strongest. So I put king e8 here. I don't know if that's 100% accurate either. Um, just to get off the dark squares. Um, and there's no threats of d5 and f4 seems way too crazy at the moment so i thought i was kind of still playing this waiting game a little bit just trying to slowly improve things um after bishop b4 i kind of changed my mind here and decided to play king d8 um now that he's committed to that so as we're talking about king d7 just when you play king d it seems like it's good too though yeah it's good yeah, it seems, I, I guess it, I sort of figured, you know, if he's going to waste time playing bishop f a5, it's okay. Um, but if not, then maybe I, I, I don't know. I was sort of lost here. It was one of those positions where I was kind of making a couple waiting moves still. Um, and then after rook c1, bishop c7, um, just kind of relocating, getting a5 ready if I can. Um, he played bishop d2. And I figured now was the best time of any to play e5 finally. Um, mm -hmm. I was like, I, I don't think I can wait too much longer. He's given me the chance to play e5, because if d5, I can just play rook d6. I don't think he can save the pawn. Um, so I thought this was finally the time to break through, because my bi I, have t I have the bishop pair. I got to use it. Um, right, you, you, you are tangled to, your right. bishop on six. So now, yeah. now it's clear to win, I think. Yeah, so after uh, takes on e5, I played bishop takes. He played knight d3. I uh, just traded rooks off. I didn't want to, if I can avoid a rook and pawn game. Yeah, sure. I would love to. <laughs> so after bishop d6, knight b4, um, I played bishop b7 here. The just uh, Yeah, now they're actually doing what the bishop pair does the best, which is just like control an open, open board. And then after bishop b2, um, I played a quick a5 while I can, um, just trying to create a pass pawn. And then after knight c, I was happy to play knight c2 rather than knight d3 because I saw at some point when I played b4, I always have this bishop e4 resource. And with knight d3, I thought it might be a little more complicated. <coughs> um, but I knew on c2, I thought I was good to go here. So I played g6, bishop c3, and now I thought b4 yeah. was finally ready. Um, Very nice shot. As long as it worked. <laughs> Tactically, I had to make sure. Uh, I didn't want to give the pawn back and sort of put us in a bad spot. So I just played king d7. Yeah, and then knight d4. Uh, just capture the pawn back. My bishop's on the on e4 is on the perfect square. Um, so I felt really good here. Just up a clear pawn and just put the bishops on good squares. And then he played king f1 and just blundered his knight. So and resigned. Oh. But All I right. guess he can't really do anything. So. Good game. Yeah.